All right, I will just hang this little mass hanger here. If I let it go, let's hold the base. Let's make sure we hold the base. And look at that. Yeah. All right. It's, it's kind of cute. Hi there. My name is John Friendsley, and I am with World's Finest Physics, and I'd like to show you how to build one of these rotational motion apparatuses. All right. So World's Finest Physics, you can see our website right there, finephysics.com. And we provide professional development opportunities for teachers. Uh, if you're a student, physics student, uh, we can connect you with private tutoring. And any contact questions you have, just see us there. We have a contact page. We respond pretty quickly. Uh, all right. So we want to show you how to build one of these rotational motion lab apparatuses that you see right here. Uh, it's pretty easy and cheap. So let's get going. Let's talk about the materials that you'll need. Okay. So you're going to need a one half inch schedule 40 T with a slip connection. See that slip. That's a slip. What's the opposite of a slip is a threaded screw connection right here. You can see the Lowe's number and the home Depot uh, part number. Home Depot uses Char Charlotte pipe and foundry. That's where I got it from. Okay. Now for an adapter, the adapter should be able to screw in to the T like this. So double check before you buy a whole bunch of them, right? I bought 10 of them so I could have 10 lab setups, uh, Lowe's number and uh, Home Depot number. It's got a slip right here and a thread right here. Okay. Set those aside. Let's see what's next. Okay. A bushing. Bushing looks like this, and so it's important that your Schedule 40 half-inch PVC, which usually comes in 10-foot lengths, uh, can fit in your bushing right here, okay? So you always pause the video and look, but you see how the Schedule 40 just fits right in there, right? It fits right in there. And then here's the Schedule 40 PVC. Got me some lengths. Uh, the rotational motion apparatus I call it a whirly gig, so you're going to hear me use that term pretty often, right? Okay, you need some mylon, nascent, uh, nylon, mylon, nylon, mason twine or something like that. It kind of looks like this, right? That was about five bucks. Uh, let's see. You need a glass marble. And I got a whole bag of these from Dollar Tree, but about two-thirds of them were the right size, between 0.6 and 0.8 inches, right? You're going to see why that size matters. Size does matter. And then we need uh, sheet metal screws. So here's what they look like from Home Depot. They're called number six. They're half inch, and I got an oval head Phillips. There's also a flat head Phillips, but those um, have a kind of a sharp edge that can scratch, and so it's not that, they're, that you will get injured, but they might. Okay. Um, the pulley you saw is called a table clamp pulley. I bought these from Xump or Zump or something.com. That's the uh, part number right there. So what you can see is you can see that you can change – you can change the height of the pulley, and then here's the mechanism where it clamps into the table, right? Okay, all good. Let's see. What else are you going to need? You're going to need uh, fender washers, okay? So let me show you those. Those are these washers right here that attach to the whirly gig, and I usually let my students do up to 10 on one side, so that means 20 because there's two sides per whirly gig. So you see the fender washers there, and they are uh, one quarter inch. That's the diameter of the inside, and one and a half inches is the diameter of the outside. So you'll see you'll see the 20 washers there. I got mine from boltdepot.com. That's the number right there. And then these are called wire eye bolts right here. So that's this piece right here. Um, zinc plated steel is cheap. That's the cheapest material. Quarter inch, that's the diameter. 20, 20 threads per inch and three inches long, right? So my Bolt Depot number for there, you need two of these per whirly gig and Bolt Depot is nice enough to include the nut for you that you need, which is a little the quarter 20 hexagonal nut right there. Okay, so you'll need those. And then here's some tools you're gonna see me use. I'm gonna use a PVC cutter, okay? It's a special material, a special, uh-oh, there goes the marble. Uh oh, there it goes. There it goes. Okay. So, uh, so this is a PVC cutter. It looks like a murder instrument, but it's just going to help us cut some PVC. We need a Phillips head screwdriver, right? Like that. We're going to need us some scissors, all right? Yeah, some scissors right there. We're going to need us a barbecue lighter. Okay. What do we need that for? Uh, gosh, are we going to, 
We're going to have 4th of July. Well, you'll find out what we're going to use it for. Um, and then uh, you saw me use the mass hanger a second ago. Uh, it was just one of these, right? But that's commonly available. You really should have that in your lab. Uh, the, the critical part is you also need the ring stand base and pole. So you'll see it under the camera here, the ring stand base and pole, or you'll see it in my little window here. That's a critical component. I did not write that down, but you're going to need it. Okay. So I'm going to show you the steps and then I'm going to model them underneath the camera here. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to measure the height of the pole. That is going to be a very important uh, piece of information as we create our rolly gigs. So you'll see here, I've got my pole there, and I've got my meter stick here, okay? So I've got my meter stick here, so I'm gonna measure the height of the pole, and it looks like my poles go up to about 59, 58 and a half or 59 centimeters. Now, uh, that's gonna be important because that's gonna determine the length of what's called the vertical piece. So on my completed whirly gig here, there's the top, that's the horizontal piece, Here's the vertical piece right here. So the vertical piece is going to be determined. That length is going to be determined by that length that you just heard me say. So I said that my poles were, uh, were 59, 58 and a half, 59 uh, centimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a length of my PVC that's about 10 centimeters shorter than that. Now, it turns out it's that's kind of an approximation. It doesn't have to be exactly uh, uh, 10 centimeters short. So for example, for me, I'm actually, I, I just said what, 58 centimeters. So I'm just going to cut a length that's 50 centimeters. Okay. So I'm going to take my little, uh, Sharpie right here. Actually, I'm going to use a pencil right here. I'm going to use, uh, let's see, nifty thick pencil that we got used to get at the AP reading until they stopped doing, uh, that kind of thing. Okay. I'm going to bring it over here. Right. Okay. So here we go. All right, so okay, so that's 50. So what is it going to look like when we actually cut? What is it going to look like when we actually cut with the PVC cutters? Watch, I'm going to try and model it for you here so we can see it under the camera. So I'm going to unlatch these and let them widen those jaws out real big. Get those jaws real big. And then I'm going to put the PVC in the jaws and I'm going to push with my fingers down, you'll hear the ratcheting sound, until that blade is right on that line. I'm going to try and get it on that line. Okay, so there the blade is on that line, and now I start to squeeze. Okay, here we go. I'm going to show you what it looks like as I squeeze. Okay, I'm going to squeeze, and you can see it's cutting through the PVC. I usually have to use two hands because I don't have very good hands. Squeeze, then let it ratchet. Or is it going to ratchet? Okay. Squeeze. Okay. Sometimes you have to hold it down. So if you hold it down, then watch. It's going to ratchet. There. That was the ratcheting sound. So now I'm going to squeeze again. I'm going to cut through that PVC like butter. Okay. Now I hold it down so that the ratcheting mechanism goes again. Okay. I hold the jaw shut so the ratcheting mechanism goes again. Then I squeeze. And then I hold it shut. One more ratchet there. And then I squeeze. And now I've got my... 50 centimeter piece. So I got my 50 centimeter piece right here, and that's going to make up my vertical piece for my whirly gig. Okay, so where did I get 50 from? 58 and a half centimeters, about minus 10. Not it's not perfect. Okay, um, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be short enough so that the whirly gig's bottom doesn't hit the blue base of the ring stand, which you can see here. If the bottom of the whirly gig is on this, it introduces a lot of friction. You don't want to have that. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my other piece of PVC, and the arms, which is the vertical part, is uh, they are going to be 25 centimeters a piece. So I'm going to take my meter stick here. Okay. Noodle, noodle. Okay. So what we got going on here? So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to be all like 25 centimeters. Okay, did you see that? I just marked 25 centimeters. I'm going to come over here. And try and make it real good. Okay, measure twice, cut once, right? So did you see that? I just measured out the 25 and the 50. So you get two more chances to see me use the PVC cutter. I've made over 100 of these for a lot of teachers in my time. And yes, if you contact me, I'll actually make these for you if your district's willing to pay them, uh, pay me for them. And if you're local here in the Dallas area, I'll even hand deliver them to you so we don't have to do shipping. Okay, so I'm going to push this down so that the blade is right on that line. Do you see that? Let's make sure you can see there's the line where I measured it. It's in the glare. 
So there's the line. So I make sure that blade is right on the line. Then I start squeezing. And once you cut enough PVC, you get really good at it. So I'm just going to squeeze. And then I'm going to hold the jaw shut so it ratchets. Okay, if I hold the jaw shut so it ratchets, just don't get your finger inside that, will you? Okay, I squeeze. I hold the jaw shut as it ratchets. And then I squeeze. I hold the jaw shut as it ratchets one more time. And then here's one of my 25 centimeter pieces. I'm going to do it one more time. So I, I pull them open like that. Okay, and then... You can even hear it, it's trying to ratchet some, but it's much better if you just do that. Just make sure you don't get your fingers in it. You can touch the outside. So I can touch the outside without losing a finger here. Just be super careful, will you? Okay, so just kind of holding these to make sure they don't open back up again. I squeeze, and then I hold them shut as I open up, and it ratchets. Then I squeeze. I'm using two hands for that. Okay, then I let it open back up, and it ratchets. And then I squeeze, then it ratchets, and I squeeze, and we've got two 25-centimeter pieces, right? Okay, golden. I don't need the PVC cutter anymore. Okay, so I've cut two lengths of PVC that are 25 centimeters. going to make the arms. So I'm going to attach the arms to the slip connections of the T. So here's the T right here, okay? And I'm going to uh, I'm gonna put the two uh, arms into the T like this into the T like this. I make the printing always be on the bottom. I make the printing always be on the bottom. Now, here's something that's important to do because when the whirly gig rotates, it's possible for these to come flying out. So it's very important to take. Are you looking in my little window here? Hello, do you see me? I'm going to put this on the table with my hands on this top piece and I'm going to push, push, push until I can't feel it move anymore. So I just pushed as hard as I could on this firm table. Now, does that mean these will never slip out? They will still slip out over time. So I would tell you that every time your students use these, they need to do something like this, or they can just push them in. But after you do these in one class, you go around and do the really forceful on the table thing. So maybe you're doing that while the passing period is happening. You're setting up for the next lap. Okay, so here we go. Um, all right, slip the screw adapter onto one end of the post with the marble trapped in between. What does that mean? Watch what it's going to look like here, okay? So I'm going to uh, slip the screw onto one of the, actually this is not, that, that direction is not correct. No, watch what you're actually doing. Um, uh, oh yeah, okay, so this is what we're doing. We're gonna slip the screw, this is my 50 centimeter piece, this is my vertical piece. So here's the, here's the screw adapter. I'm gonna put the marble in there, and this is critical. The marble has to go in there and stay. It has to stay. If it's too small, it'll slip through. And it has to stay here on this piece, too. It can't go through the pipe. So if, it, if, if you can do it correctly, you stick the marble in there. Do you see that marble? And then you put this vertical piece on there, okay? And now the marble is trapped. If you can hear it, you have not jammed this on there hard enough. So I'm going to do the same thing that you saw me do before, where I'm going to push onto the table as hard as I can. So it doesn't move. Okay, you see that? Now the marble is trapped in there. The marble is trapped in there, and that is what the pole goes into. So the pole is going to go into here, and that is the sound of the pole hitting that marble. The pole balances on the marble. That makes it very, very low friction. Believe me, it's low friction. Okay, what's the next thing we're going to do? What we're going to do is we're going to push this bushing onto the end of this pipe like that okay again we're going to force 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 as hard as we can we're not using any pvc glue you can use it if you want but i didn't do it to make the complete whirly gig so this is the completed whirly gig now so you can just screw this onto here just screw it onto here and now you have if you look at it that's the completed whirly gig right there now storage when I store, I unscrew. So when I store, are you looking in my little window now? That's how I store them. I just store them all like this, just in a line. They're almost both the same length right there, right? This is how they'll come ship to you if you order them from me. Contact us at findphysics.com, P-H-I-N-E-physics.com, right? Okay, now for the next part, I'm going to leave the vertical post off, and I'm going to do this. So I'm going to now mark the arms. I'm going to now mark the arms with dots that are five centimeters apart. 
So how am I going to do that? I'm going to take my meter stick here. Okay, let's get this kind of down. Let's get kind of down and the down. And well, no, obviously not, because that's going to not be something you can see. Okay, so I put the 50. There's a line. I don't know if you can see that line. Can you see that line right there? It's kind of hard to see in the camera, but there is a line, right? Let's turn off. All right, maybe you can see that line right there. That's the center of the T. That's the center of the T. So I'm going to put that right on the number 50. And I'm going to take my Sharpie, and with that number 50 right there on that line, I'm going to, at 55, I'm going to draw a dot. At 60, I'm going to draw a dot. At 65, I'm going to draw a dot, okay? Are you able to see this? It's kind of hard to see there. Okay, so at 70, let's make sure I'm aligned here. I'm going to draw a dot, and at 75, I'm going to draw a dot. So what you'll see is a set of dots. They're all 5, 10, 15 centimeters from the center. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to label them so that my students will know that these are 5 centimeters, 10, 15 centimeters, 20 centimeters, 25 centimeters. And then I'm even going to label them on the other side. So why? Because I'm fancy like that and because I'm actually making this for somebody else. So this is one of a set that I'm making for somebody else. and I want to provide them with the best quality I can under the circumstances, right? Um, you know, it's not like I have really great handwriting or anything. So now I'm going to do the same story, but on the other side. Okay, so five away from the center, 10, 15 away from the center, 20, and 25 away from the center. Okay, you can see them there, right? So now I'm going to do five centimeters, 10 centimeters, 15 centimeters, 20 centimeters, 25 centimeters. Mr. Frensley's handwriting is terrible, but you know what? Uh, your students, I mean, you'll, they'll get the point, right? They, they can just tell that these are all five centimeters away from the center, 10 centimeters and five centimeters like that. Okay, so now the part that we're ready for is we're ready to drill the holes. Remember, on the completed whirly gig, it's got the holes in it. I don't know if you can see those holes. And those holes are where the bolts can attach so you can explore different rotational inertias. So when my students do a lab for this, they do the same holes but different masses. Both sides have to have the same mass. But like two, four, six, eight, ten washers. And they calculate the rotational inertia based on torque and angular acceleration. Then they do a separate experiment with 10 washers, 10 washers, 10 washers, 10 washers, 10 washers, but with the, the R changing, and they get a really good parabola from that because rotational inertia is mass times radius squared, right? So they get a parabola when they vary the R, where the placement, and they get a line when they vary the M, the amount of mass attached. So what am I going to do for this? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill holes. So let's see. Here's my quarter-inch drill bit. Here's my drill. I don't know if I mentioned you need a drill, but you need a drill. Uh, and so I am going to open up the drill. I'm going to put the drill bit into the little uh, into the chuck here. And then I'm going to use a little key to tight, 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 tighten that down. Right? Are you seeing that? I'm tightening it down. Okay, all good. So now I'm going to plug in my drill. Okay, this is the part that's like legitimately dangerous. So please be careful as you do this. I don't think you need go goggles. Come on, you chemistry people. You know, you goggles freaking everything, right? But you need to be careful of your hands, right? That doesn't mean wear gloves. That just means have a brain. So what I have here, you really don't need to see that part. Okay, um, what I have here is I have a little vice. It's a table clamp vice. It came with the school. So I don't know where it came from. I don't know how you can say, maybe you can go down to the shop in your school. Hopefully it has one and you can use a vice. So here we go. I'm going, my advice is to use a vice. Okay. So there you go. I'm going to try and make sure that you're not seeing anything more than my shoes because that's not any of your concern. All right. So here we go. So here we go. Right. So gonna tight, don't tighten it too much. You'll shatter the PVC, you moron. Okay. Don't do that. Now, I'm going to try, I might move my camera a little bit over like that. So again, you're not seeing my, uh, my, my legs at all because I don't need you to see that. Okay. So watch how I'm going to do this. I'm going to put the drill there. Make sure you don't touch the, uh oh, okay. So, uh, so I'm going to put it there. I'm going to let it go just very slowly. Do you see how it wanted to wander away from the dot? I don't know if you saw that just now, but the drill is going to wander off the dot because it's curved, right? So I'm using very little force, just a little bit of force, and I'm just making the drill go a little bit. 
and then you'll see that I've, I've, I've drilled myself just the tiniest hole. Now, okay, there we go. All right, there we go. So we've drilled through both parts of the pipe. There's going to be a lot of this left over. So I would encourage you to have a trash can nearby. So rather than seeing my legs, maybe you can see the trash can right there. Okay, so now I'm going to drill here. Now, the smart thing to do would be to move the, uh, the whirly gig over, but instead I'm going to shake hands with danger here, and I'm just going to apply here. So I'm going to put my hand over here. Try and kind of, whoops, see there, see, there it went, right? So I'm going to very carefully apply a little bit of force, then apply a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. Oh, All right, there we go. So you saw it jerk there a little bit, and then we have these little pieces here. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to do it again. Hey, you really should move it over here, but I'm not going to model safety here because I'm an impatient SOB. I'm going to support it right here. Okay, I'm going to just give it a little. Okay, there we go. All right. So let's get all this little, all this little confetti, PVC confetti out here. Okay. I'm going to try and take that out. All right. And then let's come over to 20 and then to 25. So for 20, I might grab here. Uh, be warned that the drill bit does get hot. So don't. So please be careful. Be careful about grabbing the drill bit directly. It is hot for about 10 seconds after you drill, and you can get a, a kind of a blistery burn, right? So uh, a lot of friction going on here, right? So here we go. Okay, so I'm not super centered here. So I'm going to have to kind of support it from up here. Okay, I'm going to support it from up here. So I've done one side worth of holes. Now I'm going to do the other side worth of holes. So what I'm going to do here, okay, is I'm going to loosen this. All right, I'm going to dump it out a little bit here. There's a little bit of stuff on the inside there. And then I'm going to put this into here, okay, and you're going to see me do it again. And I'm sorry, this is a boring part of the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trade safety for speed. I'm going to try and do this quickly. So don't do what you're watching me do because I might do something. I'm even touching the drill bit. Like I said, I wouldn't do it. It's still kind of warm. Okay, so here we go. All right, so there's one hole. Let's get going on the next hole. Be sure to be mindful where your hands are, or else you're going to drill through those too. Okay, so here we go. If you're really afraid of the drill, just get a, get a scoop. Of drill. You know, get, get a student to do it, or, or ask your shop teacher to do it for you or something, right? Um, you know, you might have to pay somebody to do it. See the PVC is collecting on this drill bit here. And then last one here. Okay. Whoop, see, see what happens? You see how it slips off? You gotta be careful, right? I'm not being careful. I'm trying to be fast. I want to go home. Right? Keep yeah, I moved my thumb there because I thought I might be drilling through my thumb. So now I have a lot of PVC all over the floor here. So I'm going to use a, 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 a broom to uh, sweep that up. I'm not going to make you watch that. But I am going to show you that once I take the Whirly Gig uh, cross piece off, it does have a lot of litter in it. You can see all that litter in there. So I'm going to, like I'm hitting it against the bottom. 
of the um, of the trash bin. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take, this is the pole from that ring stand base you just saw, right? So here's the pole from the ring stand base. So I'm going to take the pole and I'm going to stick it in there and I'm just going to kind of back and forth with it to try and clean up the inside some, right? So I'm trying to get all that confetti out of there. Um, the first time you do this, there will be a little piece of PVC that kind of come out all over the place, but eventually you'll run out a little piece of PVC that come from the drilling process, right? Okay, so all good. Okay, uh, you are gonna do this at your own risk. Now I do not need that, the vise anymore, so I'm going to remove the vise from the table so I don't accidentally bump my elbow on it, and I'm gonna bring the camera back over here, okay? All right, so we're gonna drill holes. We did that, we drilled the holes, into the arms of the whirly gig. Okay, now, now what we need to do is we need to figure out what we're gonna do about attaching the string to the whirly gig. That's what the next uh, step is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a hole into the side of the bushing. And this is not correct. I do not recommend an eighth inch drill bit. I think that that's wrong. I think you should use 330 seconds. That's what I'm using right now. Now, this is the bushing right here. And it might be difficult to see, but you see there's actually like a little dimple or something there. Every one of them comes with this. It, it comes from the process of creating, of manufacturing these. Something about that process makes that dimple. So that's what I'm always going to drill on. I'm going to drill on that every time. So I'm going to remove my uh, quarter inch drill bit. Remove my quarter inch drill bit. Okay. There we go. Throw away that PVC there. And I'm going to attach my 330 seconds drill bit, okay. Just put it right on there, okay, real good. And then this one's really tricky, it can slip very easily. So you're gonna wanna make sure you use your key. Uh, you wanna make sure you use your key to actually tighten it rather than loosen it, okay. So you want it to be tight, all right, real tight. Okay, so there we go, like that. Uh, let's see. So now I'm just going to drill right into that dimple. Remember, that's the dimple right there. Do you see that dimple right there? I'm going to drill right into it. Here we go. I'm going to drill into it. Okay. You watching me drill into it here? Here we go. All right. Not, there we go. Once you get through, you can stop drilling. Uh, you're not drilling all the way through to the other side like you were before. You're just drilling right here. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that because the bushing has a hexagonal shape to it, you don't need the vise for that. It can just sit using its hexagonal sides to sit on the table. Well, what are you going to do now? Well, now I'm going to attach one of my number six half inch long sheet metal screws, right? So I'm going to take that. I'm going to get it out of its little plastic container, okay? If I can get it out of the plastic container, that'd be really great, okay? All good. So here's my little sheet metal screw right here. Everybody see that? Okay, so here's my Phillips head screwdriver. So I'm just gonna put this right in the hole. I'm gonna twist, and it's gonna take some elbow grease here. It's gonna take some real effort to twist that, twist that screw in, right? You're gonna twist, you're gonna see how badly you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be making that vertical piece. Okay, I'm just, and I, I would not wear a ring. I've actually given myself a blister just from screwing in nine of these other ones this morning for this, these folks I'm making this for, and it's because of the ring, so that makes me sad. Uh, it's hurt all day. Okay, so there you go. All right, so now you can screw this, this into here, and you've got, if you look in my little window, there's your completed whirly gig device. It's got the, uh, the holes in the top, okay, where you can attach bolts and washers, right? It's got uh, this little piece you can attach the string to, right? So where was my string? Okay, so uh, here's a string right here. You can see it attaches like so. You just loop it around there, and then you can wrap, 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 wrap it around, okay? You can wrap it around, and of course, I'm wrapping it around when it's on the, uh, on the ring stand pole, right? I'm not wrapping around when it's under a camera. The only other thing we need to talk about is um, making the string, right? So uh, let's see. So we drilled the hole, we screwed in underneath. Now I'm gonna cut, and I think the last time I did it, it was 1.2 meters, so 120, 120 centimeters. For those of you out there who can't do conversions, I don't know why you're watching this video then. Okay, so here's my, here's my meter stick. 
I'm going to put my meter stick down like that. And I am going to take out from my twine, I'm going to take out a meter. So you can't see it all here because not under the document camera, but I think you can figure out how to measure out one meter. And I'm going to pinch that and I'm going to measure out another 20 centimeters. So right here, right here makes 120 centimeters. I found that's a pretty good length there. Okay. So I'm trying to just get that loose there. Okay. Now, when you cut the, the, the nylon, unless you have really sharp scissors, you're going to have to do that. But then the nylon is going to be frayed. So we're going to do something called fusing. When you fuse nylon rope, and it only works with nylon rope, it does not work with hemp rope or anything that's derived from a plant, then what you do is you take, now here's the barbecue lighter. You were wondering about that, weren't you? Okay, you take the barbecue lighter, you hold it in the flame of the barbecue lighter about a second, and now look at that. You melt the nylon into a clump. Please don't touch it for about 10 seconds afterwards. It will melt on your skin. It'll hurt like heck. So let's do it the other end. See, frayed end right. So we're going to fuse it. We're going to fuse right there. I hope that that flame doesn't rise up and hurt my document camera. So it's right underneath the document camera. There it is. I fused the ropes together. Now, in order to make the two loops, the knot that I use has a name. It's called a bow. Oh, here it is right there. Bow line knot. Uh, there are lots of tutorials on YouTube. The Boy Scouts would love to teach you how to tie a bowline knot. That's where I learned it. I'm an Eagle Scout, and I'd like to help you out, right? Trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and not very reverent, if you've heard my jokes, honestly. Uh, when I tie a bowline knot, I need to tie it around something. So, again, I'm not really trying to teach you how to tie the bowline. If you need to, some help with that, ask a Boy Scout or watch YouTube. But I will show you really quickly how I turn the, the, the rope, and then the rabbit comes out of the hole, goes around the tree, and back into the hole. And again, if you, you might not be learning real good about that from this, but I'm going to do it on the other end. Again, this is not a knot tying seminar, so I would strongly encourage you to just stop. Now, this, we're pretty much done right now. So the only other thing I'm going to do is remind you of my website. So you twist the rope. It's going to make a little hole. The rabbit comes out of the hole, goes around the tree, and then back in the hole. And even I'm not very good at bowline knots. I got my Eagle Scout like two decades ago. Okay, and so that makes a little bowline knot. And so here's my little string that's about a meter long now because the other 20 centimeters made the loops. It's about a meter long. And this is what I'm going to attach my hanging mass to. So I hope that this was a helpful little uh, tutorial for you. Um, so uh, feel free to ask. Uh, I'm trying to make a document of this. So if you want to see it in document form, then just go over to findphysics.com and uh, hit the contact us button. And we would be more than happy, uh, I would be more than happy to reach out to you and uh, share that document with you. All right. Well, uh, and any lab documents you want, like student facing lab documents for how to use the whirly gigs for rotational motion. Uh, labs. I mean, just reach out, right? Just reach out through the contact us at that page. Don't reach out through YouTube because I don't like to watch YouTube or anything like that, right? I'm just uploading videos in order to help you out. So I hope I've helped you out. I hope this is interesting for you. And uh, reach out. Let me know that you watched. Bye.